Hello everyone, you're welcome to Floki's Den. If you're new to my channel or if you're seeing this video for the very first time, you're welcome. My name is Afalake and this is Floki's Den. And if you want to continue to receive notifications from this channel, do hit that subscribe button and turn your notification bell on so that you know whenever I post a new video, which I do every week. On this channel, I share lifestyle tips to help new and outbound immigrants to settle well and faster in a new country. I'm filming from Saskatoon in Saskatchewan, Canada. And what I'm going to share with you today is applicable to wherever country that you are migrating into. Like you can tell from the title of this vlog that I'm going to be sharing with you the things that you need to take along with you when you are immigrating into a new land. If this sounds like what you want to keep watching, do stick around and don't go anywhere. You're welcome back. So like I mentioned, I'm talking about the essentials that you need as an immigrant when you're moving into a new country. And this is applicable to whether you're moving into Canada, even though I'm filming from Canada, or you're moving to the UK, you're moving to um, the US, Australia, wherever you're migrating to. But each country has a particular requirement as well, different from other places. So you might want to check out in details what is different or what is required for each um, country that you're immigrating into. As you know that I'm filming from Canada, if you are migrating this way, it's important for you to know the weather or the season that you're moving into the country. You know Canada has four seasons, the summer, the winter, the spring, and the fall. And there are peculiar seasons that different things happen. So know the season that you're moving into so that you can come in with the appropriate gear for that season. When you're moving into Canada during the summer, you can come in or stroll in, like you're coming in, if you're coming from an African country, for instance, the weather is good. If you're landing during the spring, the weather is still good, but because of the country temperature that you're coming from, it might throw you off balance a little bit but you just want some light gear to step into that particular country. But if you're landing during the winter proper, and when I'm talking about winter, we're talking about the latter part of the year. It goes also into January, February. The weather is a bit cold. Did I say a bit? Extremely cold. When you're moving in at this time of the year, you want to be properly prepared for the weather meaning that you must get the appropriate gear from your own country. Try to find out where you can get a good winter jacket. You don't need more than one because the winter jackets are also very bulky. They will take space from your luggage space and you don't want to just use that luggage space for just one winter jacket. I would advise that you also put it on so you can just take that space off your, your luggage space. You can hold it or take it or put it on um, during the journey sometimes in the aircraft it's cold and then when you're stepping out of the plane to that particular country it is cold and then you will need it so you want to save that luggage space for some things that are more important one thing you must note before you leave your country of origin is that you must be aware of the luggage allowance that the aircraft is giving to you and that helps you to pack accordingly and use that particular kg or lbs that you require for that trip. You can check this from the flight booking that you've made from the airline website and then from your flight ticket, you'll be able to find out what luggage allowance or space that you have available. Remember to weigh your bags before you get to the airport. This is of utmost importance. And like I would always say to people, try and give allowance for maybe one kg or 1.5 kg less than the actual weight when you do weigh from your home because sometimes you never know the weight might be different when you get to the airport and might just increase by another 0.5 or by another 1.5 so you want to keep that weight in check before you leave your home and of course when it goes higher than that if, for instance if the weight at the airport seems higher than what you have at home it will just take you a very little um, kg above your regular weight which they would definitely be able to pass but when it goes further like 3 kg 4 kg you will be paying for that extra 
pack your bags accordingly with what is essential for the journey i know that this is an immigration it is not a travel for two weeks or three weeks holiday trip it is an immigration but it is also important to know what to put in those luggages you don't want to pack anything that is not essential you want to take exactly what you will require at least for the first few weeks maybe days or weeks into the days that you land in this new country so that you will know you so that you'll be able to have exactly what you need to settle in appropriately essential things that i would say for instance in your hand luggage try to put your documents travel documents all the things that you need for your immigration you're moving your copr your bank statements your ticket your passport and every other thing maybe you have medical records things that you know that will be essential that you can't afford to get missing sometimes your luggage that you checked in can get missing or maybe you get to that location and you have it delivered to you in two days because somehow within the transit time it gets missing so you don't want to get too anxious that those items are yet to get to you so for me i would put those essentials or those important things in my hand luggage because they are going into the aircraft with me over the headboard and then i can pick it and it's always with me and for ladies that take in their handbags it is also where you can put those items as well or if you have a backpack so it's either your hand luggage and your handbag or backpack and those can still be extra things or spaces for you to put a lot of things one thing you must note is that if you're flying and you're going to be having stopovers um, and connecting to another flight be rest assured or stay prepared i would say because sometimes you might have things missing in transit and that's where your checked in baggages get missing you might arrive at your final destination and you don't find this luggage with you it must have been mixed up within those transit times so what i advise people to do is that in their hand luggages put at least one item that would serve you for the next day a change of clothes um toiletries or your um underwear change of underwear um another toothbrush a little paste that you would be able to use and a bit of things to freshen up so that you will still be fresh in case all of this happens and if you are traveling with a child you can't just miss this out you must have you know their diapers and those extra things change of clothes for them so that you can easily just change them into something fresh and new for the next day you might get to your destination like i said and have items missing or your whole luggage not getting to you but you're still okay because you have the essentials with you in your hand luggage in your handbag or in your backpack another thing i would mention for you on this trip because you're traveling immigrating right i would suggest that you get a converter an adapter that is a converter i also brought this along with me if you can see this i brought this along with me and i bought it off um a store online in nigeria and it's been useful because sometimes you have your laptops and then the charging point is different from the port that you have in your in the country that you're moving into and this is versatile because look at this you can always flip you can always flip this over and then put this back in and use the three points one and if you require to use this you can flip this back all of this in there's a switch that will help you do that and this goes in you know everything closes up and then you can still flip this if you have another kind of socket you know it gives you three options this is another one and it goes down if you're not using it or this one so this is very versatile and then this is where you plug your socket for your laptop when you now get to your destination so this works whether you are in uk it works whether you're in canada it works whether you're in the us so it's versatile this is the most travel item for you 
also in your laptop bag or your hand luggage you can put in your laptop and the charger your phone chargers uh, if you like to capture moments during your trip and you want to carry your camera it's okay to take that along but it must be in your hand luggage or your laptop bag or your backpack or even your handbag depends on whatever you have with you in the flight and that's okay to travel with those that travel with kids you can take in um, your infant milk with you although liquids are not allowed on the flight but you have up to a hundred meals to travel with if you're taking liquid so that is important for you to take note for ladies that like to dress up or are very fashionable and wear heels and stuff in their home country um, you need to be conversant with where you're moving into and what is convenient for you to move around with for instance in Canada it is just convenient to be in sneakers in canvas in boots or in flats when the weather is right sometimes we hardly wear heels um, someone over my years of experience I wear heels I love wearing heels but it's not as convenient to put on here in Canada as it was when I was in Nigeria so I would maybe during the summer spring if I go to work then I can put on my heels or when I go to church but usually across the year majority of the time of the year I'm wearing my canvas or I'm wearing my winter boots or I'm wearing my regular work boots um, sneakers and just something really comfy for me to move around that is what it's convenient so that's you need to you need to have this at the back of your mind so you don't bring all your heels you probably will not get to wear them so that's um, one thing to note for when you're packing for the trip jeans is versatile whether you are anywhere in the world so bring your jeans along and of course when you when you come into the weather where the temperature is low you can put on your thermal wear underneath your jeans so try have jeans that have a bit of room for you to wear something else under it so it can keep you warm during the winter season and if you also have joggers joggers is really nice it's always a go-to for students in high school in elementary those are the things that they wear to school adults wear it so it's as versatile as the jeans and when you wear that too you also want to have room in it to put on your um, thermal wear if the season permits you to wear that and you want to stay warm I mentioned earlier that while traveling or preparing to travel get the 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 gear for the season so if you're moving in during the spring just get something a little bit light not a proper winter jacket because spring is not as cold as the winter season so you want to minimize the things that you bring along for that particular season if you're traveling and coming in during the winter season then buy a winter jacket at least one you don't need more than one because you definitely get something better and something really durable in that country when you move into it but you need one to step in you don't want to come in with a t-shirt when the weather is minus 40. <laughs> guys don't try that so get the gear for the season find a where you can find even if it's a pre-owned item buy it so you are stepping in with the right gear get your head warmers or your hand gloves or if you have a neck um, scarf that you need to wear just things to help you in that season that you move into if you're coming during the summer guys you can stroll in the weather is just right for you you don't have any problem but just know ahead of time that you need and get a color that is neutral so that you you can always wear that maybe a black a, a blue a beige a brown it's easy for you to wear them continuously without anyone noticing it then when you come in when you come in you definitely will be getting different jackets for each season because you also want you don't want to wear winter jacket during the spring you don't want to wear winter jacket during the fall because there are different jackets for each season it depends on how the weather is or the temperature within that time then you wear what is appropriate for that time and for my african family that love their prints i always love to wrap my african prints and for those like me that want to also come into 
Canada or travel with the African print or their native attire, depends on wherever you're coming from, you have what is indigenous to your ethnicity, you can travel with those as well. But try to make it as minimal as possible so that when you realize how your activities will be, if you are the one that parties a lot, you probably won't find a lot of parties in Canada like you would, for instance, in Nigeria. And you don't want to be guessed up with so many attires that you will not wear. You want to come in with what is essential for the time and then build up on that. I know people still have those that sew for them back in their country and then they still um, send those clothes across to Canada, to the UK, to the US when they need those. So you can always do that at a cheap rate because if you're sewing or making dresses in Canada or in the abroad, anywhere in the abroad, it is expensive. So people still do that option. But if you want to come in with a few, please just minimize your options. So you just have print in case you need to wear them or you want to go for a party, you have something at least that you can wear or you're going to church, you want to, you know, just wear, just try and um, bring in a few. You don't want to bring in that as majority of the clothing because throughout the year, you probably won't be wearing it as much as you'll be wearing winter things to keep you warm. Don't forget your party things if you are such a party person as well, like your jewelry, your purses, um, your handbags, or things that will complement your outfit when you dress up for a party. Just minimize those items as well. You can always bring them in later. For me, I, I try to cargo some of the things. It's cheaper. So if you have items that you can't bring as you fly, you can do a C freight or an F freight to bring them and you can always have them later on join you. And you can have that to wear all year round or within the season that permits you to wear those. You want to have attires for the events that you are attending per time find a few things that you know will represent you for each outing and come along with it in your bag or your luggages when you're parking so now that we've talked about so many things that we need to bring along let's go to food because that is what is important to majority of us um from my country we love our african food and um you want to minimize what you bring as well guys everything that you think you eat in your country you're going to find it in this new land that you're moving into you want to maximize the space that you have to carry essential things and when i'm talking of essential things i've listed a couple of things but with food you want to bring it as little as possible i know as you land you need to settle into what you have for instance food things that you quickly will nip on when you have children you have little things that you can quickly make for them before you can find your way around where to buy things and how to do other things so for instance you can do your rice you can do your beans in little measures that can serve you within a week or two at least it depends on your family size you can have um your condiments but please it's better to label accordingly when you're bringing anything into the country Save yourself the hassles of all the inquiries that, or the suspicion of what might be in this particular thing that you have packed. So you can label accordingly if you're bringing spices, label accordingly. When you're immigrating, other countries are very particular about the things that come into their country. So they have do's and don'ts. They have items that you can bring in or you can't bring out. In the description box, I'm going to put in a link whereby you can find the items that are acceptable and those that are not also with the requirements whether the kg you know the measurement of what you are allowed to bring into canada when you travel follow those guidelines and if you're not bringing in anything that is prohibited then you will be fine but i know that dairy products are not acceptable um you can't bring milk or eggs um you can't bring meat you can't even palm oil except you cargo you can't put it on the flight um there are a couple of things that you can bring um some people still bring like cereals for the kids there's a lot of those here i totally understand that sometimes we're thinking of the exchange rates when we are bringing things in and we look at it as um you're not earning yet in this new country and you'll be spending 
um, dollars or the exchange conversion of what you bought and you seem so expensive. I totally get it. But as soon as you start working, it just relates with what you are supposed to be buying. So you don't think of the exchange rate. Everybody calculates in their head immediately when they are buying stuff, when they newly come. But when you are really settled and you're making the dollars, the pounds that you are working for in that land, it's easy for you to just spend it to buy what you need. There are so many stores that you can get your local things from, even in Canada, in Saskatoon here. And it's just comfortable and convenient for you to do that. You don't want to always cargo things. Think about the cost, guys. If you have to bring in maybe your gari, cassava flour, or beans, or rice. Those are things that I know that my African family will want to bring into Canada. They've got weights. And those weights, you know, the, the charges are based on weights. And when they're already heavy, you'll be paying so much. So when you do the conversion, it almost does not make any sense. So just do a little bit of little things for you to settle into. I remember when we came, I had little things in my hand luggage and, um, you know, well, distributed across the luggages of my family so that we can settle in quickly. A little rice, a little beans, um, you know, I brought in some noodles, I brought in some... Um, Quick things that we can quickly nibble on when um, the children want something to eat or we just needed to you know find food to eat quickly and that's okay when you come in you can always get other things but you know sometimes some people feel they are used to this thing your taste will change when you get here and you start eating the things here they can be African but in another way it's different from what you're used to even the Milo the Milo, you know, the Milo drink that we, beverage that we have in Nigeria is different from what we have here in Canada. Even though it says Milo, it is different. So there are different beverages. You can be used to one, but with time, you will be able to settle into something different when you keep tasting that new one in this new land. So don't get overly worked up by bringing all the things in your country to a new land. Trust me, before long, you'll be used to what you find here and that will just be what your taste pod settles with. I've been able to share with you what to bring in when you're migrating into a new land. And if you've ever migrated into a foreign land or maybe recently or in the past, let's start a conversation uh, in the comment section and put there what you think new immigrants should bring as the things for them to settle into in a new land. Um, I've shared a few things of what I brought. Share yours and let's see what um, new immigrants can pick up from there so that they can be well guided. If this video has been helpful to you and definitely will help you make better decisions when you're migrating into a new land, do hit that subscribe button and turn your notification bell on so that you can receive notification when I post a new video each time I post. Thank you so much for staying tuned till this very moment. See you again in another vlog.